In two seconds, I want to bring up uh, Councilmember Mendelson, who's going to bring information about our topic, which is the redistricting here in Ward 7 in particular, also the city as a whole. I, I would appreciate if you would let uh, Councilmember Mendelson give his presentation, and then we'll open it up for questions. That would be great. When you do need, when it's time for questions, if you could stand up, give your name, and then start your question. We would ask that they be questions only. We ask that for the sake of time and respect of people's time. Um, if you have a comment that's going to take a few minutes, we can talk about that offline. But if you have a question that needs an answer that can benefit everyone, make those the type of questions we have answered. So without further ado, Council Member Mendes. It's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Celeste handed out the uh, Celeste, uh, hand, who's on my staff and is now an officer of the Ward 7 Devs, handed out these newsletters, and we handed them out because there is on the first side that article about the district, which is why I was asked to be here. And uh, I'm just going to walk over to the map. Um, this is a map that shows the existing wards, and I highlighted Ward 2 just because Ward 2 is sort of in the middle of everything. Do you want to bring this out? Just bring it out somewhere. Sure. Okay. No uh, as you know, we have to go through redistricting every 10 years after the U.S. Census. And the U.S. Census uh, identified that the population of the District of Columbia had grown. It's now 601,000 people. If you divide the population by eight, you come up with an average of 75,215. That should be the size of every ward. Redistricting is about election wards, the boundaries for the election wards. Uh, si um, five of the eight wards are, are close to the average, the 75,215. We're allowed to vary from that average a little bit, 5% above or 5% below. Ward two, which is the ward that I highlighted, is over the average by over 5%, so it has to lose population. East of the river, Ward 7 and 8 are below 5% under the average, so they each have to gain population. In other words, the boundaries for Ward 7 and 8 have to expand, and the boundaries for Ward 2 have to contract. Now, there are really only two ways to get all that to work, and that is either through Ward 5, which is over here, or through Ward 6, which I outlined in the pink. There's not a whole lot of um, merit to the, um, to the coloring, other than it just helps you in the back rows to see where the wards are. So Ward 2 has to give up, um, give up population either to Ward 6 or to Ward 5, and then Ward 5 to Ward 7, or Ward 6 to either Ward 7 or to Ward 8. So that's the challenge that we have. Redistricting is never a fun thing. Uh, typically, a neighborhood that feels that it's going to be changing wards is very upset about that. Uh, I chaired the redistricting in 2001, where we had much, a much more difficult problem. If I remember, every ward in 2001 was out of compliance, was either above the 5% or below the 5%. And uh, I think wards 2 and 6 saw shifts of about 30,000 people each, people moving into the ward, people moving out of the ward. Now, when I say moving, I don't mean literally the people move, it's the boundaries that move. And I say that because one of the questions I get, not just one, but several of the questions I get about redistricting is, well, you know, I'm going to be separated from my neighborhood. That's not true. Nobody's neighborhood changes. The neighborhoods remain as they are, uh, and it is possible, and it has been true for 40 years, that there are neighborhoods that are split between wards and have two ward council members. There's also a question about whether it affects school boundaries. It doesn't. School boundaries are decided by the school system and uh, should be based on what the population is, the school age population is, uh, closest to that school. So it's not based on the ward boundaries. I got a question at one meeting about whether historic district boundaries change. No, they don't. The only thing that changes, as I said, are the, the election boundaries. It is true that there is an effect on parking because we have the RPP districts that are identical to the um, ward boundaries. We address that each year, each time we do the redistricting. Last time what we did was we allowed within, I think it was a block or two of the boundary, a split zone sticker. So it could be ward, I think over in Kingman Park, it's like ward six, seven, if you're within a block of the boundary. Um, that might have, I don't know if that was permanent or it was just for a couple of years during the transition. 
What, what I am uh, proposing to the other members of the redistricting committee is that we actually sever the RPP mm -hmm. zones from the ward zones, ward, yes, the ward boundaries, so that what we could say is just whatever the zone is now, that's what it will continue to be regardless of what happens with the uh, redistricting. Uh, that's a decision that the council is going to have to address with regard to parking. So those are basically the, um, the uh, what do I want to say, the, the broad uh, parameters with regard to redistricting. Um, there are five or six different ways that we can uh, shift the boundaries. Uh, one of them is through uh, Fort Lincoln, so Ward 2 would lose territory to uh, Ward 5, and Ward 5 would lose territory to Ward 7. I'm not saying that these are all equally good, but that's one approach. I think you all know that the connection between Ward 7 and Ward 5 up by Fort Lincoln is not an easy connection. Um, the uh, second way would be through the um, Langston Dwellings, Langston Terrace Dwellings, Carver Terrace. Uh, right now, as you can see here, Kingman Park is Ward 7. Uh, if you just go north of Benning Road, uh, that's Ward 5 now. Uh, so that's been a suggestion that people have made that, um, in fact, some folks are saying that Kingman Park should go back to be in Ward 6 and have north of Benning Road be part of Ward 7. Either of these uh, scenarios would then mean that Ward 8 would probably shift into Ward 7. An area that a lot of people have identified is the area where Marmory Plaza is, because that, if you, I don't know if you, you probably can't see from the back, but it's like a finger, Ward 7, um, poking into otherwise an otherwise fairly straight boundary between 7 and 8. The other possibilities are uh, that um, the the area around Kingman Park, that that be expanded. That's what a lot of people call Hill East. That that would become, more of Hill East would become part of Ward 7. An alternative to that is that uh, what's called um, Near Southeast, which is by the Navy Yard. Uh, there's a development there called the Yards. It's, it's a little bit larger than that. That that would become either part of 7 or part of 8. Probably part of 8 because I believe it's across the Ancosti River from Ward 8. And, uh, and then a third option for, uh, with regard to Ward 6 is uh, the southwest area, that the southwest area would become part of Ward 8. Um, Councilmember Barry, who represents Ward 8, has been arguing for that. So he actually he suggested several possibilities. Um, southwest or near southeast would become part of Ward 8. Uh, that, of course, has generated quite a bit of uh, reaction from the folks who are west of the river. Uh, but so those are the options that are also on the table. The final one, which isn't immediately obvious, is Ward 2 does touch Ward 8, and that Ward 8 would gain uh, population by going uh, expanding that, that boundary. My finger is on the boundary, that's Haynes Point, which is Ward 2, and it's right at the boundary with Ward 8, and Ward 8 would simply come up and probably include part of Fond du Bar. Um, so those are the different options that we have before us. They have um, pros and cons. Uh, one of the difficulties with almost every one of those options is that um, the Anacostia River, Anacostia River is a natural boundary. And unfortunately, the population on the east side of the Anacostia River has not grown the same as the population has on the west side of the Anacostia River. Every Ward Goon population except Ward 8 between 2000 and 2010. So the Anacostia does present a, a barrier. Uh, we, the council has approached this in the past. We did um, go across with Kingman Park in 2001. We also went across with regard to Rock Creek, which is a Rock Creek Park, which is a substantial and natural boundary. So that Ward 4 is now on both sides of Rock Creek Park. Uh, so it's, it's pretty obvious that we're going to have to uh, either expand crossing the Anacostia in the area of Hill East or that we're going to have to cross the Anacostia elsewhere um, in order to get the wards equal in population or relatively equal in population. Uh, <clears throat> some of the reaction that I have heard is uh, people who feel that they're going to be, and I kind of touched on this earlier, uh, kind of torn from their neighborhood. And it's true that we get used to our neighborhood connections. Um, neighborhoods remain neighborhoods in spite of what the political boundaries are. Um, 
I mentioned the parking. I just want to acknowledge that, that we are aware of some of these, um, what, do I, what do I want to say, um, arguments against changes in boundaries. Uh, we've, you know, we've had to do this in the past, and people have survived, and we're going to have to pick one of the options this time, and some people, folks are going to be unhappy with whichever one of the options we pick. And the cons are not insurmountable. Uh, neighborhoods aren't, aren't um, devastated by the changes. I actually think it can be to an advantage of a neighborhood that it has two ward members rather than one. Um, but the, so those are the kinds of um, issues that we're dealing with. The committee is scheduled to meet on Thursday. That's uh, May 26th. And that means that a plan, by the council rules, a plan has to be circulated uh, the afternoon before. And uh, the committee will meet on Thursday. It will adopt a proposal and then take the unusual step of having a hearing after its action. That hearing, I had originally said, when I say originally a couple of weeks ago, said it was June 2nd. It's going to be June 1st. I think it's starting late in the day. And um, so there'll be an opportunity for folks to comment on a specific plan. We've had two hearings already, but those hearings were on just redistricting. And uh, you know, what people felt about where boundaries should change, as opposed to being able to respond to a specific plan. The council's scheduled to uh, have first reading on June 7th on redistricting. We have to vote twice. So 